views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice Voices, speak up and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stanis. Welcome to Voices of Women. I am Chris Stanis, founder of Women of Wisdom. And um, today, well, it's actually Earth Day, so I want to invite all of us to celebrate our precious, beautiful Earth by getting out there in nature, showing our appreciation for how it sustains us, and prayers that will continue to do so. And let's be aware of our actions today and how, how we impact the Earth, and just really be living consciously about that. Well, today I'm talking with Lynn Cockrum Murphy. Lynn is an intuitive consultant specializing in bringing guidance to those who seek assistance with their spiritual path. She facilitates physical healing, emotional growth, and removing blocks to a life of joy, meaning, and purpose. She has a doctorate in education. She is a licensed substance abuse counselor, an access bars instructor, advanced level theta healer, and a course instructor. She teaches at Northern Arizona University and also has a private practice in Phoenix. So she's here today with her new book, Living Hope, Steps to Living, Leaving Suffering Behind. It's an Amazon uh, number one bestseller, and it talks about how she went from hopelessness to hope. So welcome, Lynn, to the show. Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for having me today. Yeah, well, I um, want to start out with uh, you telling your story, you know, which is, um, you know, you've led quite an eventful life up at, you know, that... Um, has brought about this healing and, and your change of career and everything for you. Yeah. Um, the book tells lots and lots of details about how challenging the first 25 years of my life was. Um, the first chapter starts with the house fire that I survived at age two. I was the only one who survived that. Um, my mother had, wasn't home at the time, so after that, I went on to be raised by my mother. I had lost my father and two sisters in the fire. But my father also saved my life, which is a great gift that came from that whole experience. Um, so a little bit more about that story, those first 25 years, is that I went on to um, be uh, be like emotionally wounded, physically wounded, and then my mother, because of her own losses, began drinking. And um, actually, I have no idea if she drank before that. But I do know that after that, it increased. And um, so my sense of loss was never resolved. It increased. Uh, she remarried later on to a man who was emotionally abusive and threatening to her. Um, the book includes some... Um, um, abuse that occurred to me by a couple of relatives. So that's in there. But that the cool thing that's also in there is it talks about, or I talk about, how I had this victim mentality going. And at the same time, I had a part of me that my family fostered that said there's got to be some hope. There's got to be, if if they took me to church and said, there is this there is this God and you can talk to it and you can ask for help and you can, et cetera. So if there's that, then there's something I can look to for help. I can, can expect things to improve. At the same time, I didn't see my family go to church. I saw them drop me off there 
or um, arrange for me to go. I went to a lot of different kinds of churches because of different relatives, but I didn't see them utilize it in their life. They went to the bar instead. And so I got this real mixed message. So part of me was looking for where's this thing called God that makes a difference for people? And, you know, why are we drinking so much? <laughs> so it was pretty confusing. Um, I went on to, um, my stepdad died when I was nine, and then my mother remarried about a year later, and that that fellow was a really serious drinker, Seri- had a, quite a problem with it, and uh, my mother began to drink more, or to drink more. Um, oh, what I hadn't mentioned is um, a few years before that, she had my little sister with my first stepdad, so I had this wonderful person to look after that I just adore. Um, but then, I, you know, I went into my teen years, and I, teen years are rough with a good setup, you know, and I certainly didn't have a good setup. So those were really, that's when the abuse switched from, like, others abusing me to me allowing myself to be abused, me abusing myself, um, unable to say no to people in situations. And so that that victim thinking really was going. And then at 17, I got an offer to get married, and I jumped at it because it got me out of my parents' house. So at 17, I left my parents' house. Uh, Within about a year, I became a Buddhist, studied Buddhism, because I found, you know, if if my family said the answers lie in Christianity, but it wasn't there for them, then what what should I do? And when I heard about Buddhism, I thought, okay, okay, this sounds good. So I started studying it, and I really got some answers. And I think that that's part of what is unique about my situation, but also the point of the book, so we can have hope that no matter what path we're on, any decision at any point can change it. You can change direction. So that was a very short-lived marriage. Um, I continued my Buddhist studies and practices for some years, and including living in a Buddhist community. And then a few years later, I joined a metaphysical Christian community and lived with that group in Oregon, so a a commune in Oregon. Very life-changing, very influential, and really got me on my feet and out of the more destructive path that I was a part of living in Reno, Nevada, where in a city like Reno, it would be like living in Las Vegas. You have access to way more stuff than is good for for anybody's um, physical, emotional, spiritual well-being. So it was good to be out of that world. And I began my career as a special ed teacher. So really to wrap it up, um, the commitment to my spiritual life, I think, is what saved my neck. I got married and to a wonderful person I married. It'll be 32 years this summer. And I got to teach special ed kids for 30 years, and what a gift that was, um, teaching kids to read, write, spell, and do well in the world made me truly happy. And then I went on to teach for the university. I went on to also become um, a substance abuse counselor, work in a drug treatment center for five years, and now I have private practice. So I work for the university some, but really I private practice at home. And I get to take all those years of experience and wisdom and awareness and gift that back to my clients so that when they come in, whatever it is that they're looking for, I have a lot of tools to assist them and to help them get their feet on the ground and resolve stuff. And it, it, they leave here feeling lighter, feeling better. Mm-hmm. And so that's my joy. Well, then that's great that you, uh, I think it's very important when we do our healing work that we also give back and we reach out to help others because uh, you have, you, like you say, have so much experience in dealing with all this. So what was it like for you to, you know, to write this, um, you know, it's such a personal book of sharing all these stories, you know, including, you know, your mother was murdered, um, all sorts of things. You know, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, right. That um, her life ended with um, she and my stepdad bought a bar. And I remember I talked to her on the phone about that time because I was still in Oregon and she was in Nevada. And I said, what have you done? 
you know you have a drinking problem. And she poo-pooed it. And within two months, it was robbed. And she was killed. He was wounded. Um, and, and how damaging that was to our family as, as a whole, all of us. So back to uh, – no, I forgot your question because that piece – Hear me. Will you repeat your question? For oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, just being able to write such a, you know, what it was oh. like for you to, to write the write this book. You know, was it like yeah. revisiting all these aspects or any these incidences <laughs> in your life? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I had done a lot of the work from working with therapists to um, using newer techniques like theta healing, and really released a lot of the the angst and the grief, etc. Writing the book was another layer of that, but it wasn't as devastating as you you know as it might have been if I hadn't done so much work prior. So there would be times that stuff came up, and it would pass. And it um, it's interesting because with interviews like this, occasionally things will come up, like like just a moment ago, where I'm like, "Wow, that's that's big." Okay, and then, and where were we? And um, and then it just calms right back down. So um, quite a transition. And, yeah, I used a lot of tools, and we'll talk about those. Yes, we're going to go into that. And, and, and also, like, um, you know, what is there, if you could think of one thing that was a turning point in your life, was it going starting that, um, leaving your marriage or going to the commune or? Um. You know, I, I cannot pinpoint one thing. I've been asked that before, and I, it just seems like it was a real progression, like each decision. I'm leaving my parents' house, and so I'm getting married really young to do that, but that's okay because it gets me out of my parents' yeah. house. Okay. It was a, yeah. yeah, so I see it was, it's a process. Well, we're going to take a break yeah. right now, and we'll come back and talk more with Lynn Cockrum Murphy. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience launching in April. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
host, Di Siegel, co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman, as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Hey everyone, meet my friends at the Maka team. The ancient Inca root vegetable Maka is known worldwide for its huge array of health benefits. As a family-run company of true Maka specialists, the Maka team is here to bring you the best Maka the Peruvian Mountains has to offer. Yellow Maka, used to promote endurance, vitality, fertility, hormone health, and much more is on sale now. I love it. Visit themakateam.com to order yours now. Themakateam.com. Do I sound a little? Do I sound a little? We're back on Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and I'm speaking with Lynn Cockrum Murphy. She's the author of Living Hope Steps to Leaving Suffering Behind. And Lynn, that's where I want to go right now is just even your title. You know, how do you, we're not going to get into the steps yet, but this whole thing of suffering and, and moving from suffering to having hope. Um, Let's talk about this this suffering issue because you suffered a lot during your developing years, and and how that that can lead to um, finding peace in your life. When I first thought about that, you know, I was really really um, struck by how it doesn't seem likely that you can move from suffering to peace, and that suffering can in, even be part of what propels you to the change that then leads to to peace. But for me, the suffering is evident in those experiences that I had. And it was the long process of mostly through meditation of going within, going within, going within, and looking for peace, looking for unconditional love, looking for a different view than, oh, woe is me. Um, I think suffering is, you know, it, it, the Buddhists talk about it a lot, and or because Buddha talked about it and said it's just a natural state of being alive on earth. It's humans suffer. You know, we have desires, we want things, life is hard, and um, and you get sick, and, you know, people you love die, and stuff happens. And so that, that really struck me. Um, on the other hand, how do you not stay in that place? So, so that's where that whole teaching about all the process of moving towards enlightenment and how that's the way to remove suffering. But I also found in my, my own work, my study of psychology um, and spiritual practices besides Buddhism, that there are there's an awful lot that we can do to reduce the suffering, to reduce the anxiety, to remove the depression. Uh, you know, one of the things I talk about in the book is PTSD also, and that that was something I was diagnosed with, and and you can see why. Um, you know that it it applies to soldiers, people in war zones, but it also applies to people here at home who have just experienced tragedy. I believe it's um, PTSD is defined as what occurs for a person after they witness a life-threatening event. Um, and it's the, the numbers of people with it are pretty huge, like 8% of the population. So I mm-hmm. thought that the book was important for that, that um, I don't very often experience any of the symptoms of that now, but what I are, certainly that's... did. What are the symptoms? Let's talk about, you know, how does PTSD impact people? How does it, you know, how did it impact your life or, or people you see? Because you probably work with a lot of people that have that. What are the symptoms? Um, so maybe you know, might help people recognize. Sometimes you don't, you aren't aware that you're, that you are having mm-hmm. PTSD. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the startle reflex is one that all of us, when someone walks up behind us or the phone rings or something, kind of, you know, your attention jolts, but people with PTSD, it's like you see their body jolt and it's a riveting um, electrical feeling for them. It's big. 
it's out of proportion to what just happened, having someone walk up behind you and say hi. Um, so that's one. The dreams, um, nightmares is another. And that when certain triggering events happen where it's like you're back in the situation. So, for instance, once I watch a film on um, the fires of Kuwait with a, uh, a school event, at a school event, and it was like just too much. I had to sit and do deep breathing and things like that to get through that because of the immenseness of the amount of fire. Um, so there's a lot of recurrence, like you're re-experiencing it, and all kinds of noises or smells or whatever can trigger that. And um, part of the healing work is to learn to recognize that and control it. Um, numbing out type um, addictions often are a result. And oh, those are like four off the top of my head. So... Um, a relationship problems and trust problems also can come up after that. All of which, once someone knows about it, so it's a great thing to look up and see if you um, are hearing yourself described in it. Because it can be also triggered by um, repeated abuse. It doesn't have to be a death. Um, so abuse, a horrible car accident. Um, if you lived in New York during 9-11, or near one of the schools that's been attacked. Or, I mean, there's so many things that can trigger it. So um, what we want to do is enhance our resilience so that we recognize what's going on and we use the tools that help us return to peace and calm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and reckon, uh, being aware of what your response is, I think it's very important to because then, you know, that awareness allows you to go, okay, I need to use some of my tools now. I need to, you know, this is what I need to do. Like you said, sitting in the classroom watching a film on fire, you had to do some deep breathing. Um, right. Right. Yeah. So being um, self-aware, you know, I knew in that situation, going into that situation, based upon other things that had happened, um, like, okay, well, I need to pay attention because I want to be there for the kids. I want to be at work that day. What can I do that will work for me? And, but there were other things that happened prior to that. Um, when we lived in Oregon, we did a, a bonfire to burn a bunch of brush on the land. And when that um, thing caught fire and you hear that little whoosh and, of the wind and then um, the thing igniting and then the little boom as it pops um, that was a triggering event for me. I had to go hide. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, those kinds of things happen. And now, and now they don't, you know, because that was, that was over 30 years ago. Yeah. I, I'm sure they're unique to the person and to whatever were, was the triggering event. But as I said, with abuse, there's multiple triggering events. So it's not quite as locked in. It's, it's PTSD. It's not... Um, just triggered by one smell or one sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and so we've been talking about these hard times and, and um, in your book around finding joy, it, it seems like sometimes you need a little distance, like in order to go, like you have to um, have to have some time. Do you feel you have to have some time pass through before you realize that get to that place of peacefulness in your life um, and finding joy is hard to do in the moment when you're going through things, but um so how do you feel about that? Is it, you know, some time needs to lapse or because sometimes we're just so in it that we can't even see the possibility of getting through to the other side to find some joy yeah. here. Yeah. Well, I do think that time, you know, that's that's a belief in our country that time heals and um, it seems applicable. In my case, I was young, so I needed to grow up and have a, a broader perspective and more life experience and, and more information. That, that really helped me. I think for finding joy, it's kind of like you have to go look for it. If you aren't a naturally happy person, um, a person who laughs easily, then you it's a matter of discovering, like, how do I get that? Other, well, and that is one of the themes that I mentioned in the book is I saw other people had what I wanted. So I had a tendency to study people and and see who 
they were, how they were that way, maybe even ask them questions. And then the part that like made sense or sense or seemed to fit for me, I then incorporated into my own life. And there's some examples of that. It also made me be- believe, it gave me more evidence, people can be happy. This is possible. You don't have to stay in the suffering. Yeah. And it's so easy. We're so, we're kind of conditioned to do that. You know, it's like we indulge in our, in our, in ourself and, and um, it's, it becomes a pattern. And until you start to recognize the pattern to make the changes, Mm -hmm. you can get stuck Mm -hmm. in that indulging. Mm -hmm. Well, and controlling our thoughts is, is a pretty big deal. And I don't think we're taught that at all. It's a matter of, for me, it was a matter of meditation where you learn to become aware and to not react. And then um, psychology where you do become aware of thought patterns and irrational beliefs. I love that part, the, the 12 core irrational beliefs and how, you know, you can challenge those and change your viewpoint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and to recognize it's a choice. You can make a choice to... And it's one way, one step in turning around is making a choice to be happy. Like you said, you, you know, looked at others that were happy or laughing or, you know, could laugh mm-hmm. at things, um, how they did it. And so that you can start um, emulating that yourself, too. Yeah. You know, that whole thing about, um, you know, George Washington, was it George? No, it was Abraham Lincoln was depressed and he was this and he was that. But he made a choice and he went forward every day and and did his work and look at what he did for the the country. And I when I first heard that kind of stuff, I'm like, wow, how do you do that? Because I'm so depressed. I can't imagine going out and changing the world, let alone getting through some days. And yet it really is. It's a matter of of going, well, what one thing can I do today? What one step can I take? Um, How do I move forward? And looking for those little bits that we can do. One step at a time. It can be so overwhelming. And Mm -hmm. when you're so wrapped up in it, it's hard to even think that there's any steps there to take. Well, I think because there's also that chemical component. There's the physical component. Um which is, I mean, that's probably why a lot of people take medication, but you can also use exercise to um, to create some of those chemical changes in your body. And then, so besides the physicality of it, there is the mental, and how am I recreating this and recreating this and recreating this? I love that um, one of the things that's popular now is letting go of your story. Oh, that's true. Well, we have to take another break, but I love that. Let it go of your story. Well, we'll come back and talk more with Lynn Cochran Murphy. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Are you, are you searching? Are you searching? Looking, for a sign, looking for a sign? A message you need to hear from the great unknown, from the most mysterious place that is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are. The universe put someone here to talk to, someone God gave a blessing to that you may find insight with. The Angel Lady dot net. 1-800-323-1790. 
awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your soul purpose advocate. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Have you ever tried to make lifestyle changes but had difficulty following through? Imagine what it would be like to get up each morning with energy, clarity, and motivation to tackle the day. If you want to get past limiting barriers that are preventing you from living your best life, join holistic health and wellness coach T. Carrie Mitchell each month on The Dr. Pat Show. Or visit Lifestyle120.com today and start to receive the personal attention you deserve. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and uh, we're talking with Lynn Cochram Murphy, author of Living Hope, Steps to Leaving Suffering Behind. So, Lynn, can you give your information, like your website, where people can find out more about mm-hmm. you and the work you do? Mm-hmm. Um, I have two websites. The one for the book, if people just want to look at the book, read a free chapter, get some of the free downloads, uh, sign up for the newsletter, any of those things. That is at Lynn Cockrum, C O C K R U M hyphen Murphy, M U R P H Y dot com. So Lynn Cockrum Murphy dot com. The other website, which is more for my business, is Desert Jewel dot org. And that is where I announce classes that I'm teaching, Theta Healing, Access Bars, Steps to Leaving Suffering Behind, and a new one that's coming up in June which is getting higher guidance. And then about the services that I offer from trauma release work to, oh, I love this one, the energetic facelift, which everybody, all the women get excited about, besides my theta healing work and the counseling work and so on. So it it talks more about me and all about the services and the classes. So that's desertjewel.org. I work with people in person, but I also work with people um, over the phone or through Skype or Zoom or whatever works. Okay, great. Um, so we were just talking about how letting go of your story. And, uh, you know, it's that, that whole identity thing that we, you know, we there's that fear of losing our identity because we, we attach our story to who we are. And um, to to go through the motions of letting go of that story can be very scary. It can. The first time I um, did that work... I really ended up with a, well, but who am I response? Like, what am I doing here and who am I? If I'm not all that I had told myself I was because of everything that had happened. So I let it kind of let it come back to some degree. And then over time, kept doing the work to let that story go more and more. So in these interviews, or when someone asks me about my book, I will talk about my story to whatever extent is necessary. But I don't spend my day living in my story and repeating it to myself like I did when I was younger. I, you know, I don't have the, oh, woe is me. I have the, wow, I am an infinite spiritual being, as everyone actually is. I am that and I'm having this human experience, and it's changed for me, even from, you know, the concepts that we talk about, life is a school, we come here to learn stuff, and it's, and it's difficult. I don't even look at life that way anymore. I see life as a playground, and how fun it is, and what do we get to do next, and who do I get to meet next, and oh my gosh. So it's really changed for me, but it's, you know... It used to be more about the story. So I do encourage 
when it's appropriate for a client that I bring that up and help them um, start the process to let that go. Why stay stuck in who I was when I can be all that I can be? And I don't even know yet what all that means, as most people don't. But that's, you know, exciting. It makes life yeah. more more fun. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the journey. And and that is life, you know, it's a journey rather than we pretend to think it's such we're so linear and in our patriarchal society of what what's the end result? What are we going for versus mm-hmm. enjoying the process and 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 what that end result is never is always gonna change. Mm. <laughs> you know, it doesn't say static. Well, you talk about right. and refer to in your book a lot about suffering being an illusion. And that can help with, you know, part of that letting go of your story is if you know it's illusionary. And so I'd love for you to explain a little bit more about that. Okay. And that is based upon um, the more advanced spiritual teachings that everything here on our planet is illusion. We haven't the perspective to see that, for instance, the walls aren't solid. They're vibrating molecules in motion. And if you're a student at Maharishi University here here in the U.S., you learn how to move through walls. You learn how to put your hands through walls. If, for me, it's more like knowing that I have a body I created, I use it for this purpose, but I'm not that. I am so much more than that. So because I know that everything looks solid and real around me, but I am energy and everything around me, including my body, is just energy in a more dense form, it helps me change my thinking. And so maybe the suffering that I experience so Intensely, and I'm sure most people do when stuff happens, it's very intense. But then later we step back and have a different perspective. So I can stay in the intensity of um, that was so hard, or I can move to, wow, what an experience I chose to have. I wonder why that. I wonder why those players were in it. And it all lightens up when you change your perspective. So I can move from suffering to appreciating this is all an illusion with great purpose. And we even create our lack of awareness within it so that we can experience it. Because if I were to come into this life knowing full well what I was going to experience, I would do everything I could to get out of this life and not be here. But that isn't how it works. So we have our illusion and we step in and we grow. Or maybe we release karma, and then we grow. Mm, yeah, that brings me to my next question about karma, because you talk about that in your book, and you just mentioned like you, these players in our in your life, you know, that are, are part of our story involves other people, or or our suffering obviously often involves other people. Um, and so, how does karma play into that in your perspective? Studying karma really made everything start to make sense to me. Like I couldn't imagine why my father would want to die saving my life, but that he wasn't able to save my sister's life. You know, like, what? What was that about? Through meditation and and lots of guidance over the years, I was able to discern enough about that to make it make sense for me. But that's true with with everything. Why did I choose this whole family drama with all the dysfunction? Um, I wanted to know what was behind it. And karma really explained a lot of that to me, including a lot of the abuse. But it took time. It took a lot of taking pieces from dreams and from meditations and um, going to others for guidance until, you know, I don't need to go to others for guidance now, but I sure did in the decades along the way. And putting the pieces together so I could understand why my life is what it is. And now... Um, even moving towards the understanding that we can actually transcend karma. And that is part of what I look forward to creating in the future. But first, you know, you really have to get grounded in we have this experience and what are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. But you brought up an interesting point, transcending karma. That sounds, and that seems tied to enlightenment in a way, mm-hmm, <laughs> in, my, mm-hmm. in, my, in my sense of that, and mm-hmm. almost beyond what some of 
uh, humans can do. It just almost seems impossible to transcend the, all that. And yet there are people who mm -hmm. have led a spiritual path that have, have probably accomplished that. Yes, you'll you'll find it every once in a while, and like Baba Ramdas's books, or or yeah, you'll find little pieces of that or what Christ did. Um, and yet, I was working at a spiritual fair recently, and there was a a woman there who was doing energy work, and we talked about that that she's aware that it's changing that way, that we are all more able to see. Oh, this is one of those precipitating events. If I step into this, I will create karma. Oh, I can walk away from it. I don't have to. So there's that angle on it. And then there's, like you were saying, there's the masters who already know how to do what I don't know how to do yet. Yeah. Well, I like what you say. Uh, yeah, step in, being aware that this is something that's going to have consequences. Again, stepping into some suffering or, cons you know, What's going to happen yes. in your life if you do this? And so that's that having that awareness, like, oh, you have a choice. You don't have to do this. Well, let's give right. in our, we, we've got a um, couple minutes right here before we go to, to break. Um, give us an action step or tool that you recommend for people when they're dealing with suffering. Okay. One is question everything. Everything that you were taught now that you're an adult, do you need that? Does it fit for you today? Is it relevant in this decade? So a lot of what we were taught was to get us to behave or to control us when we were young. Now as adults, we get to think about it and reject or accept what we were taught. Make it fit and work for you. Question things. Yes, that's always good. Um, Excellence, we, we get sort of in that rote, you know, we just get, we just, Go on mm -hmm. with their lives without even questioning things, or and then we're then we're in this consequence, like oh my goodness, and we and we didn't even stop because right, it can be little or big. For me, one of the little ones was you know a, a woman always wears a slip, and then finally one day it was like really this is two thousand and five. <laughs> we don't wear nylons anymore. What do you mean you always wear a slip? You know, to, that's just a simple one, but. To reject things like that, that if it works for me, I can keep it. But if it doesn't, if it's just a rule, question it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take another break now, so um, stay tuned. Come back. We'll talk more with Lynn Cochran Murphy. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Patshow.com for listening times in your area. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show that brings a real and dynamic message to uncovering and believing in the true amazing being you already are. 
Tune in and let Catherine help you become truthful, authentic, and mindful of living on purpose one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Discover the eight things the elements of prosperity want you to know. Lynn Brown is hosting a life-transforming, soul-expanding evening on April 30th featuring guest speaker and radio host Dr. Pat Basili. Lynn was guided to make this a by-donation event for entrance, and all proceeds will be donated towards uplifting the homeless community. For more information and to get tickets, visit eventbrite.com. That's eventbrite.com and type Lynn Brown in the search. Do you want the freedom to spend more time with your loved ones, travel the world, live spontaneously? Get ready, because the Chip Justice Show is here. Hosts Dr. Pat Basile and Chip Justice can help you build meaningful success while embracing life. Living a life you love is the end game in this new, inspirational, and empowering show. Positive changes for a life you'll love. Tune in every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit PositiveChangeInstitute.co for more information. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm talking with Lynn Cochran Murphy. Uh, we've been discussing her book, Living Hope, Steps to Leaving Suffering Behind. So, Lynn, we were just, you were talking about some tools to help people with this. Um, and is there anything else that you want to share about some action steps people can take to, to, to lead them to a more peaceful, happier, joyful life? The book has quite a few tools all throughout it. The chapters are short and has lots of of ideas um, through my experience and other suggestions. In fact, at the back of the book, there's a list of things to try. And so for a person who is, say, experiencing depression, maybe still gets up and goes to work each day, but has that exhausted kind of feeling because of depression, from that list, you can try one thing a day and say, you know what, I'm moving forward. I'm taking steps. I'm not stuck. And there are ideas like just get out in nature, go sit in the backyard, pick up a new book, watch one of the films. There's a film list in there, um, films that that, um, foster spiritual growth. So those things might be useful to the listeners. So other tools, let's see. Um, Besides the questioning, there's the seeking, and that's looking in the world for who has what you want and how did they get it. Asking questions like we talked about, but seeking like, is this my niche or is this my niche? And I think the most important one to me is a spiritual practice. And a spiritual practice can be it's different for all of us. So I have friends who um, are Jewish. And so their practice, um, I think they're having, God, I don't remember the name of it, a special dinner this weekend where they prepare special meals and they come together as a group. That's their spiritual practice. And it really nourishes them. For my Buddhist friends, um, they did a a diksha the other day. It depends on what you're called to, what is familiar to you from your ancestors or from other lives, and that's what you go with. So for me, although I was introduced to Christianity, I moved towards Buddhism, and then I didn't stay with that sect of Buddhism. Eventually, I moved just to meditation and then studied with some different teachers, And that is really how I nourish my soul on a daily basis and connect with my full self. And through that, now I have the ability to hear, to get my own guidance, to feel connected, to know and feel um, creator's love and attention, and that I can offer that back because I have that deep love for that creative source that, that started all this that we are. But that's through a spiritual practice. So for me, it's meditating every morning. I don't usually do an evening meditation, but it also means that I do a gratitude list a couple times a day. 
I wake up in the morning, I think about what am I thankful for? What is so good about this life? And there's so much. And I do it again as I'm falling asleep at night. So the spiritual practice, you know, for a lot of people, that actually happens out in nature. When I was working in the treatment center, when some of my clients finally got what I was talking about, about finding ways to enter peace without getting high, it was when we were out in nature, when we were hiking, they were like, oh, boy, this does do it for me. And then some of the guys, we started connecting that fishing really did that for them. So a spiritual practice of whatever type that really suits you. Um, I know an older man that for him, it was just to read the materials from his church repeatedly. He set time aside for that every day, and it fed his soul. And so that's really all it is. In whichever way it works for a person, do what feeds your soul. And then you just kind of naturally move into a, a calmer, more peaceful, happier state. And I guess the last thing I would say is that, and if you feel stuck, try some of the things in the book. Because we don't have to stay stuck. It happens to all of us where we have the highs and lows and we have lulls. But we don't have to stay stuck. No, we don't. And and part of that is like just choosing to do something different. Like something like mm-hmm. for breaking a habit, you know, stopping in the middle of the day and go walk outside or, or you know, go walk mm-hmm. down the street and smile at a person or go to a store, do some do something, do an action step. Because sometimes we just get mm-hmm. sort of stuck sit in our chair and mope and feel sorry for ourselves, you know, like and um and it's just a matter of and, and so some of it is like decide, you know, just exploring what gives you pleasure, what what makes you happy, and to mm-hmm. um, to sit and meditate about that. Like, what did you enjoy doing as a child? Going back to that memory of might tap mm-hmm. into something that would bring that joy. Because a lot of times we've left those things behind because you know we had to grow up and get serious about life and mm-hmm. work and, and all that, and we've left behind those creative, fun things that we used to love to do. I like that you said to do something different because that often is what sparks it. You know, what about going to the movies by yourself? See what that's like. Um, Calling your niece and going to a child's movie with a niece because that's what she's going to enjoy. And wouldn't that be fun for you? So, yeah, doing something different. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a, a minute left for you. What is your last parting words of wisdom? What do you want? Um, people to to receive from you? I think the main thing that I truly want people to know is that they are shining beings of light. You are, I am, everyone listening is. We just haven't revealed it to ourselves yet. I think a lot of us are in the process now of knowing that we are creators. We are connected to creator And so we are that shining being of light and that we can let down our masks and our shields and enjoy being that. We can change the world. Yeah, I like to say that that mask is part of that suffering, too. We can put on a mask to hide our suffering or we can have or, or we can put a mass of suffering, let anybody know I'm suffering. And to think about that, to consciously choose like to, okay, I'm going to take my mask off. I'm going to try to take my mask off and be real with people Mm -hmm. right now. Little show. Oh. People love people who are genuine. They really do. It's a wonderful trait, and that's what you're describing. Yeah, that's true. Yes, and if, if more of us would do that around the world, <laughs> we'd, mm-hmm. we'd have, probably have more peace in the world. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Lynn. Chris, thank you for having me. It was a nice conversation, and I hope that it reaches the people that are ready. Yes, and you can check out Lynn's book. Um, again, her websites are www.lynncochram-murphy. Um, that's L-Y-N-N-E-C-O-C-K-R-U-M-murphy.com. And then also one that uh, I think um, Lynn shared is where um, where you can discover where her, her work is and stuff and things that she offers is desertjewel.org. So I'm Chris Danis. I'm the founder of Woman of Wisdom Foundation. I want everybody to put their on their calendars June 4th. We're having a sacred pampering day for women. We'll have tickets available pretty soon for people to buy. But right now we're still um, filling our booths of healers, psychic readers, body work, 
workers to share their gifts with our community. It's a fundraiser for Women of Wisdom. It's a great fun day and um, a great place for you to be visible, sharing your gifts and getting known out here in Seattle. So you can find out information and apply on our website is thewowconference.org. That's our, our new website for some of the things that we're doing including our annual conference. We're now going to start planning our 25th conference is going to be the President's Day weekend in February, the third weekend in February. And we're just beginning planning it now. And um, we welcome people to join, um, to participate in our planning. If you want to be part of a circle, find a community of women to work with, um, join us in helping us plan the conference. It's going to be a big year, 25th year. And you can contact us at wow, W-O-W, at womenawisdom.org. And I invite everybody to check out my book. It's also an Amazon bestseller and award-winning book, Women of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. And it's um, it'd be a great Mother's Day gift for those in your life, who, your mothers or friends, girlfriends, or yourself who wants some inspiration on the divine feminine. It's many voices exploring um, through art and poetry and stories about the divine feminine. And you can... Um, when you purchase it at Women of Wisdom, it helps us a lot more uh, monetarily wise, and that's at womanofwisdom.org. Well, thanks for being with us today. I hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today, radio with Chris Stanis.